In this video we're going to be looking at absolute values or moduluses in exponential and logarithmic equations and then how we can graph them. So we've already gone over absolute values, also known as uh, modulus, or talking about the magnitude. So if you remember they're the two straight lines, so they're like the modulus x, which basically make anything inside when it's negative turn into a positive number. For example, x when x is greater or equal to zero, or negative x when x is less than zero. So that's sort of that's a hybrid function. So if you're really familiar with those and you feel confident, then you don't have to worry too much about this video. But this is looking at the applications of exponential logarithmic functions, what happens to the asymptotes, and what happens to the different graphs when you add different moduluses at different points. And this is important as lots of people find modulus quite tricky and confusing and then they're not quite sure how to do it if it's something like the difference between e to the modulus x and modulus e to the x. So this will be going through some of the graphs that you will appear with the modulus function inside. So to begin we'll look at the log, the logarithm graph. So we'll have here the standard y is equal to log e x uh, graph with the intercept at 0, 1 and the asymptote here at x is equal to 0. So you should be familiar about how to graph log and exponential functions. So what happens if we have to graph the first one? So y is equal to log e modulus x. So y is equal to log e modulus x. So when modulus x, well when x is greater or equal to 0 then modulus x is just equal to x. So when x is greater or equal to 0, then it's just the same graph. So it's the same function here. And notice how y can still be negative, and that's because we're not taking modulus of the entire function, we're just taking the modulus of x. So here you have the exact same point, 0, 1, and it looks the same. But what happens when x is less than 0? So example, negative 3. Well, the modulus of negative 3 gives us 3. The modulus of negative 4 gives us 4, etc. So that means that we're going to actually have the same graph on the other side. So when it's negative x values, we're going to get the same function as we got when there were positive x values. So we're going to get this coming through and looking the exact same. And what's this point here going to be? Well, that here is going to be, or well, instead of 0, 1, so that should actually be that's quite important not to get the x and y confused. That should be 1, 0, and here that should be 1, 0. So this point here will be negative 1, 0. That's because the modulus of negative 1 will give you 1, so therefore we get log e 1, which is equal to 0. Now previously, log e, that would have just been log e negative 1, which is undefined, hence why there wasn't any graph there. But now that you've got this modulus function, all these negative x values become positive, so we get the same function going on both sides. And negative 1, 0, you can see how these relate. So what about if we now look on to the next function? So y is equal to modulus log e x. So now we're taking the modulus of the entire right-hand side. So y is equal to modulus log e x. So effectively this means that whenever log e x is positive, then the, whatever's in positive is just going to be positive. Whenever this is negative though, it's going to make it positive. So we can see that this graph here, well y is always po is positive along here, so it's going to be the exact same graph. So this is y is equal to modulus log e x. What happens when x is, let's say, a half though? That's y would be negative, but now that negative becomes positive. So we find that the graph looks like that. And we've reflected this bit up onto here. Now the asymptote does stay the same as it starts to approach infinity. So before, it, uh, when x approached 0, it approached negative infinity, but now it approaches infinity. But because this is still on the same line, you keep the asymptote. So you no longer have this point, but you have this point up here. We have that point here, so the sharp point, which is 1, 0. So what happens to this other side here now? So I'll just get rid of this green so we can see what's happening. Well, what happens if we take, let's say, negative 3? So if we take negative 3, then we get 
x is equal to negative 3, we get y is equal to modulus log a negative 3 modulus. Well, that is effectively modulus undefined modulus, which is still undefined. So whenever x is negative, it's undefined, because log e negative 3 doesn't exist. So that means we don't have to worry about this side of the equation. So once again, x, for this equation, x has to be greater than 0, or else it doesn't work. So that's the difference between log e modulus x and y equals modulus log e x. So how do we graph this equation? So we'll start off. So the easiest so the way I find is to forget about the modulus is there. So we'll just graph y is equal to log e x plus 2. Typically do this in uh, pencil or quickly sketch it on another graph. So we have an acetate here at negative 2. So x is equal to negative 2. And then we have a graph that looks like that where this point here is equal to negative 1, 0. And I know that because log e 2 minus 1 gives us log e 1, which is equal to 0. So we have this point here, negative 1, 0, and this represents y is equal to log e x plus 2. But now we want to graph y is equal to modulus log e x plus 2. So what this means is when y is positive, it stays the same. So when y is greater or equal to 0, then y is just equal to log e x plus 2. So it doesn't change. So that means this point here along here stays the same. So it's y is equal to modulus log e x plus 2. What happens here though? Because y is negative, that makes it positive. So that means it comes up like that. And then this asymptote here stays the same. So x is equal to negative 2. And why can't x equal negative 2? Well, when x equals negative 2, we get y is equal to modulus log e 0. And log e 0 doesn't exist, so even if we take the modulus of it, it's still undefined. And that's why all along here, we're not going to have any other graph, because it's still undefined when x is less than or equal to to negative 2. So that's the function here, y is equal to log e x plus 2. And if you quickly did the green uh, sketch on another one, then you do the sort of like the good copy here where you show that. Now it's important to get the shape uh, right with regard to so it has to look like that. And that's because originally it would have gone all the way down and effectively you're reflecting it but al along this point. However, what about if we now want to find the hybrid function of y equals modulus log e x plus 2. So if you want to represent it as a hybrid function, which we have done before. So what hybrid function? So to do this, we need to think, we had the graph, so when is x, when is log e x plus 2 greater than 0? Because that's when the modulus won't change anything and when is it less than 0? Well, it's greater than 0 when x is greater than negative 1. And if you remember the graph, that's because you have negative 2 asymptote here, you have that point there, which is negative 1, 0, and it goes positive, and then it goes like that, or it comes down. So it's when x is greater than negative 1. Then when log e of x plus 2, what happens, when is it less than 0? Well, it's less than 0 when x is less than negative 1. However, x cannot be less than negative 2 or equal to negative 2 because then it is undefined. And that is really important. You can't just say when x is less than negative 1 because all this point here, x is undefined. So if you wanted to write as a hybrid function, we can say that y is equal to log e x plus 2 when x is greater than negative 1 and it's equal to negative log e x plus 2, and it was negative the entire function because the modulus function encompasses the entire function, when x is between x and negative 1. Okay, so going on to the exponential. So we have y is equal to modulus e x, and y is equal to e to the x. So graphing 
the standard uh, exponential function. We have this, where well, this point here is going to be 0, 1. That is y is equal to e to the x. So firstly, y is equal to modulus e to the x. Well, when e to the x is greater than 0, then modulus e to the x is just going to equal e to the x. So it's the exact same function. Nothing changes. And that's because y is always greater than 0. What about y is equal to e to the modulus x? Well, that means that whenever x is greater or equal to 0, modulus x is equal to x. So along this end, we find that it's the same. What happens when x is less than 0, though? Well, that means negative x is equal to x. So effectively, instead of having this end, we're now going to get rid of that. But instead, we're going to replicate this graph on the other end, because whenever x is negative, it changes to positive. So we're going to get this graph here. So y is equal to e to the modulus x. And at this point, and yeah, it must label always like the sharp points, that point there, 0, 1. So what about this graph? So this has, in terms of k, so we're going to draw it when k could be set of any number. So we're going to assume that x, k is going to be greater or equal to 0. Or we'll, k is going to be greater than 0. So that means we're going to get like negative 2, negative 3, or negative 4. So in general, we have an asymptote here. And that asymptote is equal to y is equal to negative k. And this point along here, and that is, this is a graph of y is e to the x minus k. So this graph here, modulus, well it's going to be the same when y is greater than 0, and then it's going to flip it when, x, when y is less. So it's going to look like that. Now because this point was approaching negative k, this point up here is now going to approach another point as well. But instead of approaching y is equal to negative k, it's going to approach y is equal to positive k. And the reason for this is because of the modulus function. Before it was approaching negative k, and that's because e to the x minus k approached negative k. But it still approaches negative k, but now approaches modulus negative k. And modulus negative k is positive k. So we're going to get this graph here. Now it's important to label the two points. So this point here is when y is equal to 0. So when y is equal to 0, we have 0 is equal to e to the x minus k. e to the x is equal to k. Log e both sides, we get x is equal to log e k. So we're going to get ln k 0. Then this point here, the y-intercept is when x is equal to 0. e to the 0 is equal to 1. So this point here is going to be 0 modulus 1 minus k. And that's the general form of, the, of this equation.